Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make a wet palette. Now I appreciate there are plenty of videos on YouTube there that, also, that show you how to make wet palettes, but actually if you don't know what a wet palette is, the chances are you haven't been looking for how to make one. So what I thought I'd do is I'll show you how to make one, then I'll show you how to use it, and then you'll understand why it's certainly worth your time. Now you can buy these kind of already made or professional versions. However, I'm showing you a really, really cheap way to do this. So what we've got is, we've got a little um, sort of Tupperware sandwich tub here. Now the reason that we have them, these sandwich tubs is because they're quite thin and that's really helpful. This one I bought from Asda for one pound. Um, we've then got some sponge cloths. Now if you, can't, if you haven't got access to these, these again I bought from a pound world, there's six in there for a pound, you're only gonna use one. You can use um, a kitchen roll um, as well instead. So I'll show you how to use either, either method and then the choice is up to you. You also need some baking paper or some parchment paper. Now be careful which one you buy because some of these are um, have a wax coating on them which makes them not very useful for what we want. Some are even foil backed as well. So just make sure that it's not the waxy coated one and it's not, um, not the foil coated one as well. If you can find parchment paper then it definitely won't be uh, wax coated. So again, this is from a pound shop one pound, these are a pound, that's a pound. So for three pound, you can make a really um, cheap and effective wet palette. So we'll get started. So we start off just taking the lid off uh, the sandwich box. And if you take one of these uh, sponges, just pop it upside down on top and draw around it. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out just maybe about two or three millimeters inside of that line. The idea being we're gonna make it so that it fits uh, quite snug in the bottom of this. If you're not using uh, the sponge, get yourself uh, four sheets of kitchen paper and just do exactly the thing, exactly the same thing rather. And then again, just cut them out about two, two millimeters in from that line. And what you'll end up with is a sponge that fits inside here. Okay, right. The next job is to get yourself some of the parchment paper or the baking paper. And again, just roll it out. Just roll it out. Take the sponge or take the paper that you've just cut to the right size, put it on there, draw around it, and cut it out. And you will end up with, you'll end up with some baking paper that fits exactly over the top of that as well. Next stage is we take our sandwich tray, put the sponge inside, and then what you want to do is just get some water and just pour it on and we want to soak the sponge don't worry about putting too much in because we can always take it out so just make sure that the sponge is well soaked it's absorbed as much water as it's going to absorb and then just pour out the excess once you've got the excess out take your greaseproof paper and just lay it inside just making sure that it stretches to the edges. And all you want to do is just smooth it out. All we're trying to do is just make sure that the, the baking paper gets soaked as well, because this is how it keeps our paints wet, it's but without watering them down. It's that transference of the moisture that just stops them drying out. So just pat that down, you'll see there. And that is how you make a wet palette. Now remember, if, you haven't, if you're not using the sponge and you're using the kitchen towel, just do exactly the same process. Put the kitchen towel in, pour the water in, um, just get it all soaked in, pour off the excess, and then put your, your parchment paper or your baking paper over the top. Now what you can do is, um, I would recommend that after you've been using this for maybe a week or so, you just, uh, or, or every time that you sort of put a fresh piece of paper on the top, just wash the sponge out, rinse it out, and, and refill it with fresh water. Because over a period of time, it will start to go a little bit stale and it will smell a little. It'll still work and you can just keep topping it up with water, but it, it will start to stink a little bit. So we'll get some paints and I'll show you exactly what the benefit of using this as a wet palette is. Okay, so what I've got here is I've got a couple of Citadel paints. I've got a corn red there and an ultra and gray. I'm just gonna show you how to use the wet palette. So you get the paint from your pot, 
put a bit of it onto your wet part there we'll get a little bit on and then what we can do is if you get your water if you just put the water to the side you can mix it into the, the paint to get the right consistency so as you can see there it's still probably a little bit thick let's get a little bit more water just start from this side here and you can draw in the paint to get the right consistency and you can see there that's starting to be about right now so it's slightly transparent um, but still plenty of red pigment in there okay so then what we can also do is we can get some of the grey paint let's put a little bit here so you can see obviously that's still quite thick and get some of the water and again we're just going to thin it down just thinning it from the side and drawing it across until we get the right the right consistency that looks about right and then what we can do is we can use it to just mix in some of that red we can draw some across so if we're wanting to lighten the red up a little bit let's draw it across and try and bring a little bit more red in so you start to get so what you can see is by doing it this way you can take that red and you can go from a very deep red into a slightly paler red and then by adding in grey here we can lighten it up further and what you can do is you, you can get a bit of a, a kind of a difference color in red so this is how you can kind of build up your reds so you, you might just want to use this for a for a sort of um i don't know maybe you're doing a shoulder pad on a marine or something you might want to use this color here as a bit of an edge highlight and then this one is a bit of an extreme highlight and this is basically how you can do it and what you'll see there is if i'll just put some of this it's dirty water now but it might actually help you see it i don't know if you can see it there let's do a bit at the top we put that there you can see the water is just pooling on the top of the grease spruce paper and the paint is doing exactly the same thing the moisture from underneath is keeping it um, damp it's keeping it wet it's not diluting the paint but it keep it's keeping it just sitting on the surface there and what you can do is if you finish painting for the night you put uh, back on your your lid seal it up and because it's airtight that will stay wet and you'll be able to start painting from it again the next painting session you don't have to remix paint again so you could do a couple of like, if you're doing a, a unit of five tonight you want to do the next unit of five tomorrow night this will still be wet again um, the next night and it doesn't dry out beauty with this bit is it's all very cheap the grease proof paper that you get will do hundreds and hundreds of squares of this so for a pound you're getting a sort of un almost unlimited use probably more than you'll ever use certainly in a year anyway the sponges you get six sponges in so potentially you can uh, throw the sponge away you can replace it you can make yourself a couple of wet palettes for different um, sort of a different armies or different painting or whatever and again these little sandwich boxes they're handy to get the sandwich boxes because they're not very deep so what you're not trying to do is trying to get your hand over the top into them you can actually sort of just come in from the side and just mix them nice and gentle there okay that's me just messing them colors up with the, the dirty water but you can see here if that's a little if that's still a bit a bit too thick you can thin it down a bit further if you've thinned it too much you can get a bit of paint and just mix back into it again to get it back to the right consistency but it, what it does is if you're especially when you're painting on a, a dry palette and you're painting under sort of a lamp it tends to dry the paint out and it it, it stops it sort of it, be, it becomes a little bit almost choky sometimes when you put it onto a model so this is an ideal way it will improve your painting no end please anybody that's never used a wet palette before please just give it a try even if you don't have a tupperware uh, bowl just get a plate um put some kitchen towel down put some baking paper on top of it and give it a try and i promise you it will improve the quality of your painting just by getting the quality of your paint um much more consistent because what you're not doing is starting off with a very kind of um, a very perfectly mixed paint and then as it's drying out while you're painting or paint like sort of batch painting um, it's not drying out and getting worse and then you're trying to remix it again to the right consistency you can see here this is still really really wet here I mean it's, it's under quite a bright light here as well it's just not drying out and that will be perfect tomorrow as well so 
give it a try please post your comments down below um, let me know how you got on let me know if you see an improvement in your painting because I promise you it certainly was the one thing uh, that really lifted the quality of my painting to um, to another standard so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video Thank you.